Part 5. The Return to Print After the passing of Frank Herbert in 1986, some rumors had circulated that his son Brian Herbert might continue the Dune Saga, where his father had left it off. Brian Patrick Herbert was born June 29, 1947, and is the elder son of Frank Herbert, and already an established author in his own. He even co-wrote a book with his father called Man of Two Worlds, but would remain unpublished for years. Brian and his father also had discussions on the possibility of collaborating on a Dune book together. Brian had been approached by some well-known authors to work in collaboration on continuing his father's saga. However, Brian Herbert would explain that Dune was sacred ground, and he didn't have the energy to take on the project like that at the time. The seeds of doing a new Dune novel would start to grow in the back of Brian Herbert's mind, when, in 1991, he began researching Frank Herbert and the Dune universe for an autobiography about his father he intended to write. In 1996, Brian was approached by Ed the Kramer, Dragon Con co-founder, who was an editor of anthologies. Ed Kramer convinced him to edit an anthology of original Dune short stories by various authors. One of those authors was Kevin J. Anderson. Kevin J. Anderson was a well-established science fiction author, having written books and comics for Star Wars, along with various other properties, and also his own original works. In January of 1997, Kevin J. Anderson would write a letter to Brian Herbert, explaining that he would not only want to write a Dune short story, but a whole Dune novel. Kevin was a huge Dune fan and wanted to know where the story was going after Chapter House Dune, even if he had to write it himself. After that, the two writers found they had really hit it off. Kevin was just the catalyst Brian needed to get him to take on the task of continuing his father's saga. However, now the two authors had to figure out where Frank Herbert had intended for the story to go in a seventh Dune novel. Then, in 1997, a safety deposit box that had been missing for 11 years turned up, with an outline for Dune 7. Also, Brian Herbert had discovered 1,300 pages of working notes in his attic and floppies that had belonged to his father. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson had everything in place it seemed to write Dune 7. That story would have to wait. Brian and Kevin decided that Dune 7 should be a big event that needed to be built up to. Also, that readers should be reintroduced to the Dune universe first so the team decided to work on a prequel trilogy instead. Then, in November of 1997, Publishers Weekly put out the news that Bantam publisher paid Brian Herbert a $3 million deal for the new Dune prequel trilogy, based on newly discovered notes left behind by Frank Herbert. Then, in October of 1999, Dune House Atreides was published. It debuted at number 13 on the New York Times bestseller list, and rose to number 12 in its second week. Once the dam was broken, there would be no shortage of Dune books for years to come. Dune House of Trades was received well by some fans, as shown by these examples of some of the reviews for the book on Amazon. I love science fiction, and I read the entire Dune series by Frank Herbert many years ago. When his son started writing the newer books to fill in his father's gaps, I jumped into them, and have devoured each new chapter as soon as it became available. This book tells the story of Duke Leto Atreides, and is the first of a new series. The events happen a generation before the original Dune book, and together with the other two, House Harkonnen and House Carino, they give a great introduction to the original books, providing a much better background to everything that follows. This book explains a lot about the history of House Atreides and Harkonnen, providing lots of context for the Dune series. I wasn't sure it could dovetail well with the Dune, but it read as if Frank Herbert had written it, and that's a high compliment to Brian Herbert and Kevin Anderson. Well done. However, the new book would be utterly rejected by other fans. This book is dreadful. Brian and Kevin should feel ashamed at writing such dull prose. This turns the previous book's of a master into nothing more than a franchise. It was so dreadful a read, I cannot be bothered. Dune, House Atreides is one of the most disappointing works 
I have had the misfortune to read. Within the first quarter of the book, it was obvious that the book would be inferior. By halfway, anyone could see that all the characters thought alike. They were cartoonish villains or naive youths. By three quarters done, the book had so offended me that I called the person who recommended it and every other Dune fan I knew and ranted about its inadequacies. I finished this book solely so that I could write a review that expressed a fraction of my disgust. Previously known intelligent characters blurt out their plans for no apparent reason. As many characters from the original Dune as possible could meet do so. The Emperor is characterized as a bumbling twit. Fenring is a murderous punk. The Bene Gesserit are believers in rather than manipulators of religion. And that is only the tip of the pestential iceberg that is House Atreides. The author has displayed for us that 1. He doesn't understand his father's work. 2. He lacks the intelligence to design believable plots, and three, he lacks the humanity to create believable characters. I would not recommend buying this book, even if it were sold for 25 cents in a used bookstore and came with a pack of gum. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's Dune books would cause a split among the Dune fans, with one side defending the new books and the other outright rejecting them. The Dune fans who were critical of the new books stuck them with the names New Dune and Mick Dune also declaring the new Dune books as non-canon. Many of the criticisms pointed toward the new Dune books are violations in canon and poor, lazy writing. Also, not continuing the story as Frank Herbert had intended, but going with their own ideas. As fans would use evidence from Chapter House Dune itself that the great enemy was intended to be face dancers and not thinking machines. Some fans even question the existence of any notes left behind by Frank Herbert, and if they do exist, little was used from them, as shown by these two forum posts from the Jagarutu, the Cast Out Dune Discussion Forum. We'll never see the notes as long as those two are alive. If they do exist, there's no way they were closely adhered to in the sequels, and that would plainly show how little respect they had for what Frank Herbert intended. If they did follow his notes closely, it would show that Frank Herbert had gone totally off his rocker. If they don't exist, I can't believe even they would have the audacity to forge something. I gave him a chance, gagged through a couple of the books, wasn't compelled to let them ruin Seven for me. Now, a decade later, I see both parts in a free bin at the local. Thought, what the heck? Geez, what crap? I don't believe those were written from any of Frank's notes. Having read both prequel series, Hunters of Dune and Sandworms of Dune, I have a more middle ground view of the newer books. I found them to be mostly entertaining and on par with your average Star Wars EU novel, or other books of that stripe. They do the job for some escapist entertainment, but are shallow. They are, unfortunately, in my opinion, nowhere in the same caliber of the original Dune novels, the Foundation Trilogy, or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? I don't hate them like some Dune fans do, but I can understand why some fans reject them. I do wish that Frank Herbert could have finished the Dune saga, and would trade my whole stack of Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson books for just one more by Frank Herbert, without even the slightest hesitation. As the 90s would come to a close, and Dune video games were being played, and book deals being made, Something else was going on behind the scenes that would bring Dune back to the screen, but not the big screen. It would be the small. Thank you to all of my subscribers, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification when new videos are uploaded.